So what is going on YouTube, my name is Mehul and welcome to a brand new video in which we're going to quickly discuss all the new features which are coming to ES 2020 that is the new ECMAScript standard which would be released and implemented in all the major browsers this year. Starting off with BigInt. Now BigInt is one of the most awaited features in uh, JavaScript which is coming finally which would actually allow you to have much bigger integers in JavaScript for data processing for data handling. At the moment, the maximum number you can store as an integer in JavaScript is 2 raised to the power 53 minus 1, but BigInt actually allows you to go even beyond that. And this number, 2, 2 to the power 53 minus 1, is represented as number.max underscore safe underscore integer, and you can finally have numbers greater than that. But for following that, you need to have a n appended at the very end of the number as you can see right in this example so that n denotes that this is a big int and should be treated specially by the javascript engine by the v8 engine or whatever engine it is using and uh, that's how it's gonna work that's it moving on to dynamic imports well javascript would natively provide you the option to have dynamic imports in your application which would help you to reduce the bundle size you know bring in native javascript code on demand without having module bundlers like webpack which would remove the overhead of webpack as well so yeah it would allow you to native uh, load the modules lazily and here's um, one quick example as well for this thing so for example if you have a module.js file you can dynamically import it inside an if else condition wherever you want and then use it just like you would do with some HTTP request in promises. Next we have is Nullish Coalescing. Now this feature actually allows you to test against only Nullish values. In JavaScript, when you do a Boolean test, it actually tests against all the falsy values. And in falsy values, a lot of actual values might also come which might not be falsy to you. The most common example is if you're checking for zero or empty string, then it actually matches that as a falsy value. But if you just want to match only null values or undefined values, this is something for you. So there's a sweeter syntax for checking only null values. So you move from all that um, crap of type checking and everything to just checking um, if the va variable is null or undefined then you're going to make use of the default value. Otherwise, you're going to keep the same value. Pretty sweet syntax, if you ask me. The next thing we have is optional chaining in JavaScript. Now, optional chaining is something I love, and I, I'm using it for a long time with um, Babel and parsers like that. So optional chaining allows you to have all the properties nested in the object. You can have any, any structure of the object and you can go ahead and access any property you want, whether it's defined or undefined. So there's a simple example for that. To access, for example, user.profile.name.firstname, if the object is not really coming from the code directly, it's coming from the HTTP request or something, it's better to go ahead and check all the way down to the first name. Just in case something is null or undefined, your program won't crash. And if you do that the native way, that's the first line. The optional chaining syntax make it so nice and sweet that you can ju just do it in a very readable way. The next we have is promise.allsettled. Now natively JavaScript does not provide you any method or any functionality to check if all the promises have actually settled, right? And by settled, I mean all the promises are either accepted or rejected. Now there are methods like promise.raise and promise.all stuff like that but they are not really um, waiting for all of the promises to either accept or reject they either quit too soon or they either you know just just fail on if any one of the promises fail so yeah it's it's a pretty decent addition if you ask me on the native level then we have a method added to the string prototype that is string dot match all now match all method is actually something which you would use if you're using regular expressions so match all would return you an iterator which would allow you to an iterate over the results which would be 
um, basically if you're using regex you're going to understand this in a much better way if you have a regular expression which matches a lot of um, occurrences in a string then you're going to make use of match all right now if you want to match every captured group and everything then you have to execute make use of the dot exec method and run it in a loop so that's the traditional way of doing it but uh, now with match all there's an iterator method there's a actual native method which is again very cool we have the support for global this finally now what global this do is that global this allows you to actually access the main global um, variable of the platform now with javascript the deal is that you almost always get a global sort of thing which holds all the objects and stuff which are coming from the uh, the actual engine in some sort of named variable for browsers it's window right for a node it is global and you know it gets confusing real quick for web workers only self is accessible so stuff like that is confusing so javascript standardized this ecmascript standardizes this by introducing global this and what do we mean by global this is that this would be platform independent in the in the sense that you're going to make use of global this on the web as well as on the node otherwise um, you have to write specific custom code to check which platform you're running on for example if your code is platform independent it can run on both node and uh, browsers then you have to actually check if you're in a node environment or in a browser environment by actually seeing that if window is available or if global is available or not but this fixes that next thing is we have module namespace exports now module namespace exports what this does is that it allows you to use a uh, neater syntax to export the modules now earlier you you know that we can do stuff like import everything from a module file but in javascript till now you could not have an export statement which says something like that that export everything from this module file now this is usually useful if you are creating a bunch of utilities in a folder and then finally in an index file you import everything in that particular folder and export it out to the world so yeah this this basically just nices out the syntax and smooths it out a little bit so here we are and finally we have well-defined foreign order now foreign loops are pretty common in javascript so what happened is that the specification did not specify the order in which the uh, iterations were happening yet in the for in loop so for a and b if you have something like that then it is not really specified in the specification that what order should be followed in the loop that is the first iteration should return what element the second iteration should return what element that is being defined now and it is consistent however um, the browsers were still using a very consistent apis um, and implementation so that was not really a problem but nonetheless it's good that it is um being formalized now in es 2020 and yeah that's that's pretty much it for um es 2020 and uh, i think they are pretty decent improvements the way javascript is progressing you can see from the last five six years every single year we have improvements to javascript the biggest one in es 2015 of course nobody can forget that but yeah that's that's something I am very proud about this about this JavaScript community that we keep on growing and evolving as a community and uh, we are like stronger than ever before. So cheers to all the JavaScript developers out there, cheers to everyone and uh, let me know in the comments below what do you think is the best feature for ES 2020 and in JavaScript in general. So that's all for this video, if you liked it don't forget to subscribe, thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.